tēnā tātou ko tāi mai ki tēnei ākoranga o ngā mahi e pāna ki ngā tuituinga o ngā mahi whakairo rākau ara ko te whakare Welcome everyone to these tutorials on, or this tutorial on those patterns that relate to traditional Māori carving. Uh, I'm Mike Matchett from Te Whānau Apanui and uh, I will be your guide today. Okay, so one of the first things uh, that we need to do before any drawing is I need to introduce you to the idea of uh, how your body moves and how your body moves will assist you in being able to uh, draw a little bit better. So one of the things you need to keep in mind is that uh, your body is made up of pivot points. So your wrist, elbow, shoulder and so on. So when you have your hand resting on the table, uh, you're using that natural movement to help you uh, draw as long as you're at the center of that uh, or the inside of that curve as opposed to the outside. Okay. Oh. What you should do first is just practice drawing a kōru. One way two or three times. Okay, once you've done that, all running to the right, flip it over, still going to the right. Now you'll probably have a piece of paper uh, or a sketch pad and you can turn that as you're drawing rather than uh, like I have a whiteboard. Uh, it's a little bit harder for me to turn that around so I'm just drawing this way. Now you've done that. Now if you link those lines up all of a sudden you have a mongopare pattern. So the hammerhead shark and the hammerhead shark is about tenacity, strength, and endurance. And just like that. Okay. Oh, I want to show you another two or three techniques for drawing kōru. Uh, so within a triangle. Starting from the narrowest point using your hand to pivot around, touching the sides, and then doing the inside line. Do that again. So generally you practice two or three times. So your first one may not be your best one, but if you're looking back on what you've done and then improving uh, with each one, in theory, by the time you get to your, uh, your third one, you should have uh, a notice improvement. Now, you start rubbing out some lines. And then tidy them up. The second technique, same thing, draw a triangle, oh, a little bit out, and this time when you're drawing your kōru, you're not quite touching the line. Mm. 
the inside line and then just rub out that line okay. and then you can choose the color those uh, spaces in whatever colors you have available just over here just so that you can so you can see the uh, the effect achieved So you can see it's quite easy to build up a, uh, a pattern from there. So you can see from uh, what we've just done that uh, it's quite easy to build up a series of patterns using uh, just triangles and koru and also de develop a pattern uh, using uh, colour. So I think that's enough for now for uh, koru. purpose of the exercise now for you is to uh, research online uh, call Fai Fai patterns or go to your local marae or anywhere that there are uh, call Fai Fai patterns and when you look at them you'll now be able to see how they're put together and maybe uh, it'll be a little bit easier for you to draw the same patterns and then over time who knows maybe you'll develop your own pattern uh, right now uh, we're going to move on to uh, what are known as a series of uh, carved patterns uh, starting off with uh, rape rape uh, which was one of the most common patterns found throughout the motu uh, dating back to pre-European times. So what I normally do is I start off by drawing uh, a rectangle because we need to uh, define the space that we're going to be drawing in and then starting from one corner uh, using those same techniques that we used uh, when drawing the koru we start from one corner come around and then connect those lines up Now as you're drawing this, ideally you want to be keeping the same spacing right throughout. So whatever that spacing is from the outside all the way into the center. And once you're in the center, then you close it off. And that's your wrap it up your spiral. Now we still have uh, some space that needs to be filled and that can be done a number of different ways uh, starting off with unahi so whatever that distance is ideally right through same over here 
from there to here. And just for a little bit of variation, uh, I'll draw another spiral or torino in this corner. And that's a rapid up here spiral. The next one we'll draw is Unaunahi, which is another pre European uh, style of spiral uh, found right from up north, right through the central North Island. So we start off in the same way we draw a rectangle and then our spiral. Starting off on one corner to halfway. So trying to keep in mind that whatever that distance is there, there's a similar distance right through, and close off your spiral little flick to the corner, same over here, and then do your fill-ins. I'll just change things around a little bit with this. We'll have the spiral in this corner. Now the thing that makes this uh, spiral different from Rapi Rapi is what you do inside. So these fill-ins or unahi scales, usually they're in uh, sets of three, but with older carvings, uh, sometimes you'll see up to seven, usually in odd numbers. So what you do on one side, whatever that distance is from the, set, the, the middle one to the back one, you do the same over here. Again, uh, here, and try to curve off one line onto the other so that there is flow to them, so that they're more like C's. There is no set number to the uh, spacing or the number of unahi that you have. Um, it's really just an aesthetic thing. Unless, of course, you have a specific corded or attached to them as to why you're doing that number. I like to uh, balance them out so if some are going that way, then on the fill-ins I'll have them going in the opposite direction to create a little bit of visual tension, so to speak. Okay, and that's your unahi spiral, or una unahi. 
So the next one I'm going to be drawing is uh, called Punga Were Were, or Pū Were Were, Punga Were Were. Just depends on uh, what area you, you're from. So it can be found once again from right up north, uh, right down to Taranaki, these days even further. Um, and as always, start off with your rectangle. Punga Were Were, uh, I'll use that term for this. Uh, is another one of the um, pre-European designs so you are carved using uh, stone chisels so once again start off from your corner to around about halfway trying to keep consistent spacing throughout <laughs> Which of course doesn't always work, especially when you're using uh, whiteboard markers instead of a pencil and a rubber. So close off your spaces. Keeping in mind consistent spacing. The thing some of you might have noticed uh, in terms of the difference with this spiral is the centre. So instead of there being an S in the middle, uh, there's a straight line. So that's the beginning of the difference between Punga, Were Were, Uno, Nahi, and Rape Rape. Now the other part are what we call uh, rito rito, so this relates to the centre of the flax bush. So in the middle you have uh, the child and the parents either side and then the wider community or extended whanau around them. In this case we're only having the, um, the three. Oh. And then balance it out by doing one opposite and then space them out around your spiral. Now one of the things that you'll notice is unlike the unaunahi, instead of a C, when you draw the rito rito, more like a wave for the first one and then the next ones flow from that point. So flowing like a wave and then from that point the other two. And then you just add your rito rito in to those spaces uh, where you think they should go. usually flowing away from the centre. All of these ones are flowing away from the centre to create a sense of movement and growth. Right. And that's Punga Wiri Wiri. So the next part of our lesson is uh, going to be about drawing different head styles. So I'll start off with um, one of the most common ones, which is an abstract style called Feku. So initially to start off with, draw a centre line. Uh, divide that centre line into 
three equal parts. Uh, each part is for a different part of the face. This bottom part is for the mouth. So you're drawing a curved line around and stop around about there. Then you draw the inside of the mouth, so this is the outside or top part of the mouth. So that's one, two, and then draw a tongue. And then bring that outside line across. Then you draw the nose, so that's three. So the nose can come in a whole range of different uh, shapes and sizes. It just depends on the style and the carver, but for this purpose we're using this style of nose. There's four. Long flowing line from around about halfway along on this curve. And then another line underneath, five, six. Now you can draw a circle within that eye, and there's your karu, and taringa on the side, seven, eight. So try to flow off one line and onto the other. Same thing again, 9, 10, and then following that line, flow around and up, it's the top of your head, slightly straighter line. And then a hairdo, 13, flowing off one line and onto the other. So of course now you have to draw the other half. Next thing I'll do is uh, quickly show you how to uh, draw some of those surface patterns that I just drew onto that head. So this part here is the widest. And you can draw a rapirape spiral there. And why it's drawn there, and why a spiral is drawn in that widest part because, is because that represents um, the jaw. So that's a point of movement. So spirals normally go on points of movement. We're saving the larger spiral for the top of the head because in theory that's where all the energy comes from, all that thinking, the action station. Okay, so that's your fiku style head 
Will the top it up each one or not? So we'll have a go at another one. So doing our second uh, style of head, starting off in the same way. Your centre line. Divide it into three equal parts. You don't have to stay within those lines. It just depends on uh, the style. So for this one we're going to be drawing more of a uh, northern style of head. So the shape of the mouth tends to be a little bit more heart shaped. And uh, the inside of the mouth is a little bit wider and more even. So not as wide across this part as with the fiku. Different style of nose. Laying up and around. So with the um, feku style of head, the eye came out past the line of the jaw. Whereas with this one, we're keeping it uh, more inside the line of the outside of the mouth. Uh, that's so that we achieve what's called the, the bell shape of head, which is uh, sort of a classic uh, Taitokero style of head. And then the underside of the eye Brown line, eyebrow, and then uh, nostrils. Okay, so the design we're going to apply to this will be the unaunahi, or based on the unaunahi spiral. The widest part, put a wrap it up here and there, and then centre line through here, flaring off to one side, flare off there, and the same again here, centre line, flaring off there. flare off in that direction. Now your unahi will go within uh, those spaces like this, flare, flying off one line onto the other. His eye looking down just for the fun of it. Make it a little bit different from the feku. And then a spiral over here. So when you draw the other half of the face, that will balance out. And that's a Taitokero style of head. Still a feku because of the shape of the, of the eye. It's that elongated shape. Center line. Divide it into three equal parts. 
similar heart shaped mouth but we're going for a different uh, style of eye even spacing around tooth tongue inside the mouth the nose bridge of the nose crown line eyebrow around side of the head and this time a round or oval eye and then top of the head quite low down and then rounding over that way so that's a hauraki uh, style of koruru uh, and on this one we'll draw pungai wereware but in a slightly different way again from the taitokero so no rapirape on the um, on the cheek we're just doing straight lines center and down we can fit three into the space and then rito rito spaced out along those lines going back the other way nostrils and that's your hauraki style of koruru so that will uh, do you as far as the drawing goes um, I hope that this has given you an insight into uh, how the carvings you see out in your communities whether at the marae or in town centres uh, have been created and developed from the drawing so that you can sort of see what's actually in the carving uh, rather than just being amazed by the detail of it all. I uh, hope you have fun uh, doing what you do. Uh, hopefully we'll meet again. Kia ora.